It's funny, they're even they're even both struggling with the same feature. That's like really, really funny. They both got to the same feature at the same time, and now they're both struggling with the same feature. Great Nate coming in with an answer, and it looks like his answer is 1916 grams. That is not correct. That is not correct. Great Nate coming in with the answer, 1916 grams, and that is not correct. Not correct. So Great Nate's now going to have to go through and try to figure out what exactly was wrong with that model. You know, did he miss a dimension? And he's a CSWE, SolidWorks Certified Expert and Mechanical Engineer. So maybe you could tell us a few more fun facts about these guys. Yeah, so this one was pretty shocking to me with uh, Great Nate lining up there is the fact that he's only been using it for seven years, yet he's still in high school. So he's like most of us that are machinists with that overtime starting work since before we were born if you go on a 40-hour week. But outside <laughs> of that, he loves playing volleyball, which is assume he might live somewhere near the coast, hopefully not the east coast where I'm at right now getting rained on. Outside of that, it looks like we have Ricardo Jean. He obviously loves his wife. Outside of that, he's a SolidWorks user since 2006, which almost wow. guarantees he's been using it longer than Nate's been alive at some wow. Outside of that, he's Yo. also a brother and father are designers. So he's a multi-generational designer nonetheless. Yes, I like that. It runs in the family. Guys, this is going to be a very exciting matchup here. Uh, we got... Great NATO 8, our number one seed. Ricardo Jean, our number eight seed. The very first matchup in the Elite Eight. This one could go either way. I'm on the edge of my seat. I can't wait to see what happens here. Great Nate from the United States running Fusion 360. Ricardo Jean from Italy running SolidWorks. Here we go. Good luck to both. This CAD battle begins in three, two, one. Go! What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance on this one is plus or minus two. This is called angled plate. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture of this print, coming up with a plan on how to get started and jumping into their CAD systems. Let's flip over and take a look at the action. We got Great Nate on the left running Fusion 360. He's a Fusion 360 phenom. We got Ricardo Jean on the right running SolidWorks. He's a certified SolidWorks expert and mechanical engineer. Great Nate drawing first blood, coming up with that very first solid feature. Ricardo Jean on the right, still coming up with uh, what looks like maybe his first feature. Possibly experiencing a screen a screen freeze here from Ricardo Jean, which it's okay if that happens. You know, either Zoom will catch up or he's caught up. There we go. Decided to go with those fillets in the first feature. I like it, but Great Nate was right there with him, already getting those fillets in place. That was pretty crazy. I've never seen that in SolidWorks. The window select, the auto fillet corners on a rectangle. Yep. That's pretty neat. But it is cool that both guys are taking kind of the same approach right now. It looks like everybody's starting with the base and working their way up. I personally wouldn't have went that way after a quick glance. But then again, that might just be the machina side of me from years of having to make stuff like this and wondering what's going on. Well, it's always interesting that we've got, you know, we've got two CAD experts here. There's so many different branches you could go off on on your decision tree when you're deciding how to build this part. And yet both of them decided the exact same grouping of features to begin with. So cool. Yep, 100%. And you know, something that's kind of crazy is I remember seeing this and this might be a pro tip for the rest of the competition is I did see a trick what was it last week when I was watching while driving across the country is it's not where the hole is. It's sometimes just a hole through there will still get you the same mass. Yep, that's a that's an old trick in the community. It's what's known as the Ivan exploit. And uh, you're absolutely right. <laughs> there there are times when people are able to to leverage that exploit. And there's there's times when sometimes I have to uh, I have to create what's called an Ivan exploit. Uh, an anti-Ivan exploit feature. And so, for example, in the bottom of this plate, you'll notice that I, I strategically located that cutout directly beneath those holes. So yep. if you don't put those holes in the right spot, you're not going to be removing the correct amount of material. It's funny. You could be modeling for years and years and years. And at this point, looking back at it, it's like now you have guys exploiting for speed it completely <laughs> changes how you have to model and go against the grain. Yeah. Well, you know, my whole my whole goal in creating these challenges is to help teach people best practices. So that's where, like, I actually am motivated to create anti Ivan exploits because I don't want them to develop bad habits. You know, I want them to develop good habits so they can, you know, they can actually use it in their job. Yep, 100%. I mean, when I train people on the CAD side of the software and design 101 is 
I always tell people, your sketch really doesn't matter. Yes, fully constrain it as both softwares are capable of, but nobody looks at your sketch. It's all about the model, right? Mm. How do you get to the model is more important than having a perfect sketch at the end of the day. Yep. And I noticed it looked like just a moment ago, uh, Great Nate 08 was using like a co multi contours in one sketch. Is that a feature in Fusion? Run that by me one more time. It looked like he was he created multiple closed contours and then was able to pick different regions to extrude. Yeah, so you can 100% do that at the end of the day. Uh, you That's have the ability to actually, instead of having one region, you have multiple different regions, or as I like to say, fenced in areas mm -hmm. is a little better way to look at it. I like that. That's cool. That's good to know that Fusion can do that. I would say, though, it could be a disadvantage, though, is all those extra mouse clicks click in regions versus maybe creating just one clean shape. But right. we'll see how it plays out. Yes. Yeah. Boy, this is, this sure is a close match. These guys, this could still go either way. Nobody is clearly ahead or clearly behind. It is it is wild to see. And I mean, seeing this live from this view versus watching through YouTube, it's even crazier when you get to actually take a little bit of time see the mouse click see what they're doing see the thought process even is is great yeah and and once again look at this these guys are it's like you're watching a mirror of of uh two different you know images of the same user almost they're both at the exact same feature they're both going through in the exact same order Ooh, great nate there look like maybe he was using a, a delete face there i like that even, so that is one even... nice thing in Fusion is you do have direct model editing. So the ability to pick a couple of faces and just hit your delete key tends to auto repair. Yeah, solid. it's funny. They're even they're even both struggling with the same feature. That's like really, really funny. They both got to the same feature at the same time. And now they're both struggling with the same feature. Great Nate coming in with an answer. And it looks like his answer is one, nine, one, six grams. That is not correct. That is not correct. Great Nate coming in with the answer, 1916 grams, and that is not correct. Not correct. So Great Nate's now going to have to go through and try to figure out what exactly was wrong with that model. You know, was, did he miss a dimension? Did he miss a feature? He's going to have to figure that out. Looks like he's recognizing something here. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit of a trickier part the further you get in there. Well, we are at the Elite Eight now, and so I wanted to make sure that these guys, you know, were being tested, really, truly tested on their skills. I remember Ivan the Reasonable said he always did better in the later rounds of the tournaments because in the earlier rounds, you know, you could get done the models so quickly that they tend to favor the people who kind of know the the basics and just really repeat the basics. But as you get deeper, like this model, you know, you have to, you have to put a little bit more thought, a little bit more consistency in. I think the hardest part about this so far for anybody that has to sit in my seat is to not shout out <laughs> into my microphone that is a hot mic how I would do it, right? Yes, yes. We And we've had a lot of discussion about that on the channel, you know, wondering how much it really does affect the, the runners or not. But I appreciate that all the, the co-commentators have been able to kind of keep it, you know, keep it a little bit more on the conservative side as far as sharing, oversharing, you know. And so I think that that's, that's the trick here is that we don't want to ruin it for them. We want to really truly give them a chance to compete one versus one. You know, it's really up to each of them to figure it out. And if one of them happens to get stuck, you know, you don't want anybody to get in there and, and ruin it for the other one. I mean, I would even be interested if we could almost have the contestants mics open because I'm an out, out the verbal, you know, kind of thinker where I would be talking myself through this to prep myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that Mrs. Tall Toby, she said that would be pretty cool if we had that or, you know, maybe some other ways of like keeping stats. How about like a heartbeat monitor on the runners? I think, <laughs> think that would be a good one. <laughs> how, how sweaty is your mouse? After? Yeah, exactly. Little, uh, 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 what's it called? Humidity Looked gauge. Looked like Great Nate was going to go for something again, but he's coming back to make another decision. Mm -hmm. And once again, we see, okay, so Great Nate coming in with an answer. Two, one, seven, nine. That is not correct. Ricardo Jean coming in with an answer. Two, one, eight, four. And that is correct. Wow, wow, wow. Two, one, eight, four is what I came up with. And that was a plus or minus two gram tolerance. So you can see how close Nate was. Two, one, seven, nine. If it was two, one, eight, two, he would have been within range. Wow, what a close match. What a treat to watch these guys.
My goodness, good game to Ricardo Jean. Very well done. Solid, solid the whole way through. Good game to Nate. Great Nate 08. Definitely got in there, ran into a few hiccups along the way, but uh, super impressive from both of them. And wow, 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 Ricardo Jean in the chat saying, gosh, Nathaniel Black is so fast, man. <laughs> yeah, he's keeping the pressure on you the whole time for sure. What do you think about that match, Phil? I mean, that was quite impressive. I see uh, great Nate still back here trying to uh, figure out where he went wrong, and I'd be curious to know as well, nonetheless. But that was extremely close. And to say within technically three grams, it looks like, by my math. Yep, that's exactly right. He was right there. Right there. So close. One little feature was off. One little feature was too small, too big. That's all it takes, man. That's all it takes. It's the wheel. The wheel of fate is unforgiving for sure. Well, speaking of that wheel of fate.